Hey everyone, today I'm going to be teaching you the basics of chanting and weird rites out in the swamps of Louisiana while we summon Shabnigarath and learn how to master Dulu Wars with the Black Goat. I, okay, at least we'll be teaching you how to win with the Black Goat. That's stuff with the swamps in Louisiana. Uh, we'll be reading some H.P. Lovecraft and that'll, that'll get us through that, so. Black Goat. Hey everyone. So I know I've made a lot of jokes about not liking Black Goat. Um, and I'm not going to say this is my favorite faction. But some of you have commented on, on like what Black Goat must have done to me or whatever. Like did it kill my mom or something? No. Um, the thing about Black Goat is I like a lot of factions like Yellow Sign and Crawling Chaos that happen to start next to Black Goat and Black Goat is sort of in my way towards world domination. So um, they are a good faction. They honestly they're, they're a great faction which makes them so much more frustrating to play against if you play against someone who knows how to play Black Goat. The, the best way. And so I'm going to teach you some of the techniques that Black Goat players can use to really dominate the game and ultimately uh, win often if not most of the time if the other players aren't ready for these, these, uh, these strategies. So okay, first of all Let's let's talk about the unique ability, the Fertility Cult. Now it says, when you summon monsters, you can summon multiple monsters of one or more types from one or several gates. You still may only recruit a single cultist per recruit action. So here's the thing about Black Goat. So obviously you could spend on the first turn, um, I don't know, you could spend six power, no, uh, first turn it'd be dark young fungi. This is how not to win with black goat. It doesn't make any sense. You, you can summon a lot of monsters. I find that this ability is used strategically to great effect or it's abused and it totally ruins the tempo of Black Goat. Black Goat has an advantage over other factions that is not listed in their unique ability, which is to most of the time end the round with more power than other factions. So Crawling Chaos, obviously they, if they have Nyarlathotep, they have the ability to have another burst of power at the end of the round, but you can just, as Black Goat, almost always end the turn with more power. And you've got to do that a couple different ways. One, you have to do things like when you get your ghouls to be free, which is from uh, the Thousand Young, when your ghouls are free, you can just summon them one by one. I know you can summon all of them all at once, but you summon them one by one. Zero power, boom. Hey guys, take an action, spend some power. Oh. I summon another ghoul. I don't even need it. Zero power. Boom. What are you guys gonna do? You're gonna spend all your power? Oh, okay. Now I'm gonna make some decisions about what I'm gonna do with all my power. You can respond to people's vulnerabilities with Black Goat. And it's uh, it's kind of the opposite of how to make friends and um, it's more like how to earn enemies by saving all your power to the end of the round and then ravaging anything that's left vulnerable. Uh, obviously factions like Cthulhu with Dreams, they're gonna pick on people that, that take gates and leave them undefended. It's far worse with Black Goat. With Black Goat, you're gonna be pulling out monsters on a fairly regular basis. They're cheaper for you and you have more power than most people and you're going to be able to conserve a lot of that power till the end of the round. So the first thing you have to decide is do you want to summon Shabnigrath first turn or second turn? 
Now, most other factions should not summon their great old one, even if it's even possible the first turn, they shouldn't do it. Uh, you can. I would recommend not. So you've got to look at a little bit of, at power economy. So um, now your spell books, are, they say things like have units in four areas, have units in six areas, have units in eight areas. Don't do that all at once. It doesn't, it's not going to do well for you. So um, you also have, as your action, eliminate two of your cultists from any areas on the map. Now, every time you summon Shub Nigroth, you have to sacrifice two cultists. Uh, one of your actions is sacrifice two cultists. This is actually a little bit of a boon. It's a little bit of a boon. Obviously, it's not great because you got to resummon them, but um, you can use it to great effect. So let's say, for example, uh, turn one, you spend, let's say, three power. And now you're in four areas, right? I would recommend getting the red sign. The red sign spellbook says, Dark Young can create gates, control gates, each add one to Shub Nigroth's combat, and each earn one power during the gather power phase. They do not act as cultists with respect to any other purpose. So the Dark Young are awesome. Uh, in, <laughs> to me, when I face Black Goat, I feel like these guys are more the Great Old One than Shub Nigroth herself, which makes sense for the mother of monsters or whatever. So, okay. So the red sign, let's put that out. Boom, four areas. Now, uh, you know, things are happening. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe a cultist is going, uh, obviously it's Cthulhu. He probably does stuff in the ocean. I don't know, North Pacific. He's gonna summon a gate. That's what he does. All right, so next, you have to worry that the other faction, whoever they are, um, obviously I don't have a third out on the board, but whoever it is, they could choose to pick on your cultists. I don't know, maybe they get, you know, maybe Dreams is a first spell book or whatever, who knows? But it doesn't really matter. As your next action, just sacrifice two of your cultists. Where whoever is like unattacked should be who you leave alive. So if Cthulhu were to attack with a frog somehow, then sacrifice this one and this one. Don't, you know, obviously don't just sacrifice these two, because then on Cthulhu's turn, he's just going to capture your cultist. So if you can get people to waste power, that's even better. So whoever is undefended, that's who you need. You need one of them to be alive. So as your action, you sacrifice two cultists and you get another spell book. At this point, I recommend Thousand Young, but if it was different and they started attacking your main units, it, it could make sense to get Frenzy. If they're gonna be aggressive like that, you could choose Frenzy. Frenzy says, your cultists now have a combat value of one. But I recommend the Thousand Young. If Shub Nigroth is in play, Ghouls, Fungi, and Dark Young cost one less power each to summon. So it would have cost three power to move those three out. You did sacrifice two cultists, the Thousand Young, that for the moment and you still have five power at this point you should be able to react because the other people probably are starting to run out of out of power let's let's just assume it's a normal normal game you're just going to summon that second gate and uh, that's going to cost you three that puts you at two you're going to spend two and you're going to summon your last two cultists a big reason why, uh, obviously you could pick on somebody else, you could uh, summon a, a monster maybe or whatever. I've got my cultists out and I needed them all to be out so that the next turn, when I, I start with 10 power this turn, and that's pretty good, 10. Most people are probably gonna start with 10. Um, there, there was no opportunity in this scenario to 
pick on somebody else and you you want to hope the other people are picking on each other you're not attacking anybody yet you don't have anything to attack with yet uh, maybe they'll leave you alone or maybe they're more determined on getting their goo out especially crawling chaos if crawling chaos was out obviously you'd be here or um, South Atlantic or something, right? Let's just assume uh, it doesn't really matter because they're both adjacent to Cthulhu. But let's let's say that you're here because if Crawling Chaos is out, they're going to be over there and they need Nyarlathotep out. You know they need Nyarlathotep out, but that's fine. Uh, you sacrifice two cultists and you have at this point Shebnigrath out and you can get another tile. Now, you want Frenzy out, um, but I, I might at this point choose Necrophagy. So it says move any or all ghouls who were also not involved from any area to the battle area, even if you're not involved in a battle. For each ghoul so moved, both sides in the battle suffer an additional pain result. So. I awaken Shem Nigroth. It's a new turn. That cost me uh, eight power. I still have two power left. And um, at this point, I can flat out just summon my two cultists. Or, or if there is, I don't know, uh, a cultist in a gate. And of course, Cthulhu's like busy trying to summon great, or great Cthulhu's busy trying to summon Cthulhu. At this point, an avatar might be interesting. Um, there, you know, he's out of power probably at this point. So, for zero power, you summon a ghoul, and for one power, you capture the enemy cultist, something like that. Uh, and then for your one other power, you summon a cultist. So. That's, I mean, that's how you're kind of supposed to look at using Avatar, is uh, you pick a target, preferably at the end of the round, and boom, you Avatar them out, you take control of their thing, and then you summon a cultist. Now, you kind of need units constantly to be um, available to summon. If, if you've summoned all of your ghouls and you've summoned all of your cultists, you're not going to be able to summon cultists when you've taken something. So that's, that's just a big component of Black Goat, is to try to always have uh, some units available. Obviously you want power, so you want cultists out, and uh, when you get, say, Blood Sacrifice next, now. I was trying to go through some of these scenarios. Let's just kind of go through the rest of the spell books. Blood Sacrifice. If Shub Nigroth is in play, during the Doom phase, you can choose to eliminate one of your cultists from anywhere on the map, and if you do so, get an Elder Sign. Hopefully you can spare a cultist every turn and get an Elder Sign. I know you might want to resist, but it's just... It does two things. One, it means you're always going to have a cultist available. And that's that's a benefit. Like Cthulhu, Cthulhu has their, their little um, deep ones, and they have to feed them to their Shagaths, or they won't have them to use um, on Devolve. Well, for you, you have to have cultists available so that when you avatar somewhere, you want to be able to summon one of your cultists back to take that gate. So, um, and of course, the cool thing is, is <laughs> in this scenario, if you have Frenzy, your cultists now have a combat value of one. So if you have Frenzy out, then your cultists could beat up their cultists. It's kind of like my honor kid can make, can, or my, my kid can beat up your honor kid or whatever that, that sticker is. So your cultist has a combat die. That means 50% of the time he's going to drive off uh, one sixth of the time, kill the, uh, the enemy cultist. And that's pretty cool. Now, Groth. 
growth is an area. Um, if the result is equal to or less than the number of areas containing fungi, your enemies must eliminate cultists equal to the role between them. So that's, um, right, in order to get these spell books out in the first place, you had to be kind of spread out. So realistically, it's going to be pretty hard to get um, your fungi everywhere all the time anyways uh, you might be able to start this way um, slowly summon them I don't know whatever you're doing but uh, in this case you're gonna roll a die and if you roll uh, equal to in this case four or less then your enemies must eliminate cultists equal to that roll so you are always eliminating cultists and you have an ability to eliminate everybody else's cultists as well. What's kind of cool is, again, if you have a bunch of dark young out, then you're getting one power per turn per dark young in addition to your cultists, plus the, <laughs> this is horrible. Like I'm looking at it and I'm like, this is horrific. Um, if, if your enemies ever let you do this, they deserve to lose because you would have so much power with a scenario like this that by the end of the round you might have say six power more than everybody else if you end the turn with six powers like this use groth multiple times use groth twice you use groth twice and you roll like two or three um, and then the second time you, you know, you roll two or three, you've just wiped out four to six cultists from your enemy. It's, it's crazy. I mean, that's, that's why they can't let you at some point, everybody's going to gang up on you. And, uh, luckily you, you have a lot of power and you have avatar. So as they're moving around and maneuvering and you have, uh, your ghouls, Let's, let's talk about necrophagy for a moment. So we talked about Groth just now. Um, there's not a lot of strategy to it other than keep your fungi separated and um, try to save as much power towards the end so that they don't have a lot of options to counter what you're doing. And as I said, in order to, to have the power at the end of the round, you have to do things like your your dead ghouls that maybe soaked up a kill a pain kill a, a, a kill on a previous round. The uh, you summon them once at a, one round at a time, and that's just going to make sure that you have the majority of your power used at the end of the round and not the beginning of the round. So that's that's the first thing that again I just have to remind you. But then the ghouls themselves, necrophagy has it has the ability to bring in things and retain an area that you perhaps lost the ghouls themselves cannot take a, a pain or a kill if they have not been part of the battle and in order to use necrophagy you have to have not been part of the battle so let's say there was a attack by two Shagaths. In this scenario, let's say that they got two kills and you got one pain. In that scenario, normally you would lose both Dark Young and they would use lose one Shagath. Um, well, actually, and even their, like their one Shagath, uh, if it was a kill, it's obviously it's dead, but if it's a pain, it's just you know gonna have to retreat. Well, now they control that area and you would have to move somebody in to even take it. So what you can do is you can, uh, if, if they got two kills and you got, let's say you got a kill, then necrophagy at the end of the battle, you bring in two 
uh, technically before, and you that gives another pain. So now they have to retreat again. And on your turn, you can uh, you could summon a cultist, or you could summon another dark young. And right, you still have control. So that's the big value of necrophagy: is that you will always have a unit left in the area at the end and you will have probably driven off the enemy with either one or two pains. So um, that's that's it. Like, necrophagy is always abused. Either, either people think that they can um, take the pain themselves. They're like, oh, I bring in my ghouls and my ghouls just get pain. No, that doesn't work that way. Um, or they just don't use it to their best benefit. Like, oh, everybody's gone, now I resummon a, a Dark Young. Again, you want to save your power towards the end. And now, the next time, if they really, really want to attack, they attack again. And now, of course, the kill the ghoul gets. And, and you like that. You like your ghouls dying. That's great. You, every time your ghoul dies is awesome because it's zero power to resummon him as. Uh, um, as long as Shub Nigrath's in play. Obviously, maybe more so than Crawling Chaos, you need Shub Nigrath to be alive. That's, is, that's pretty much a requirement. Without Thousand Young, um, it's going to be harder to spread the way that Black Goat needs to spread. But other, other than that, this is... They're, they're, you have a lot of options, and you're going to be picking on people, especially with Avatar. I mean, Avatar is so brutal. Avatar makes enemies. Avatar makes people want to quit the game sometimes. Avatar is brutal if you if you use it at the right time, and uh, that can be a lot of fun. It can be a lot of fun to do Avatar. Obviously, you have to worry um, after Unlimited Battles. After Unlimited Battle, you know, starts coming out, people have their sixth spell book. Unlimited battles can really screw things up for Shub Nigrath. She's going to start dying more often because obviously you you avatar someone, and uh, you know things happen, whatever, and boom, and then at that point, unlimited battle, Cthulhu shows up or Nyarlathotep shows up and just attacks, and that that doesn't work for you usually very well so um let's see that's i think that's the key i i hope i hope this helped you out they're they're powerful man they're black goat are scary the whole game because it just seems so almost unfair with their uh with their dark young producing extra power it's like as much as i like yog sothoth having an extra gate just from their great old one three dark uh, three dark young that's three power young sothoth is two power and they, you know they can control gates i don't know it's so crazy it's so crazy it's and with that i want to end it with uh please post down below any advice i missed if you are a person who likes to charge with Shub Nigroth first turn, post what that's like. What do you do? Um, at that point, I yeah, you don't at that point you don't have any more gates. You have less power in the second turn. Why do you do it? Well, like when is it a good time to do it? Because I am not willing to take that hit personally. Um, on the other hand, I would never summon Shub Nigroth third turn. When does that make sense? Just if you could, guys, could post down below. Let's have like a, a concentrated guide of how do you win with Black Goat and anything that I missed. All right, with that, uh, I want to thank you for your time and uh, see you next time. Bye, guys. Black Goat, they're cheaters. That's it. That's all it is. These guys are cheaters.